Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone on Think Tech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, RB Kelly, and today I am excited to share something with you that has been created by Leyland Papaya. Is that how you say your name? Yes? Leland Papaya. Leland Papaya. All right. Yeah. That happened on air. Oh, well. Going to keep moving. Leland Papaya. So, Leland, can you, can you tell me a little bit more about what you've created and what you're trying to, to advocate for? Yeah. So, I'm following a dream that I've had for the last couple years to start a mobile app where people will be able to have dinner parties at their house and charge people to attend. Mm. So what brought this into creation? <clears throat> well, with uh, the popularity of other share economy businesses like Airbnb and Lyft and Turo, mm -hmm. I just felt like it was the next uh, great thing to come. And I, like I say, I had this idea a couple years ago and was like waiting and waiting and waiting for someone else to make it happen because I feel like I get ideas all the time and I just don't follow through on them. And two years later, there was still nothing available. So I was like, I'm going to take a risk, and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to launch it in Hawaii, and it's going to be great, and everyone's going to love it. Ooh. So, so is this something you've been doing on your own, or do you have a team to try and help you? Well, I've been. I'm doing it on my own, but I do have a developer that's mm -hmm. creating the app for me. I don't know how to do code, so. Gotcha. So can you tell me a little bit <clears throat> more about what the experience will be like when the app is done, how it will work? Yeah, so um, you will create a meal for you uh, and your family, if you like. And then uh, let's say it's your auntie's famous lasagna, and you uh, decide how much you want to charge for people to attend. Let's say you have two extra seats at your dinner table, and you charge $15 for uh, each of those seats. You throw it up on the app, and people will be able to request to come to your party, and you either approve them or not. Hopefully, you'll just approve people because they want to come to your house and eat dinner with you. And then, yeah, they'll knock on your door, they'll show up, and you'll get to make new friends and share your love of food and not have to um, fit the bill and the expenses for uh, feeding people, which is what I tend to do. And I feel like a lot of people uh, do a lot of potlucks at their house because they don't, they can't afford to, you know, feed everyone. And I think with this app, it gives you an opportunity to be totally in charge of what, you know, the dinner is going to be at your house, but having a little financial support from your guests. Mm, so I can see how some people, enterprising people, would even turn this into a thriving business. I like know. this is what they do. Yeah, so if you're a personal chef or even if you have a restaurant but you just kind of want to create a specialized menu at your house because you have a beautiful house on the beach, um, yeah, it's an opportunity to get really creative in what you do at your dinner table and make some extra cash. I can even see, I've been watching Hawaii Five-0 recently and Danny and Steve, they want to open a restaurant and they haven't opened it yet and I could even see for them this app would be something where they could have it at their house and they could test recipes on people yes. and get feedback before they actually went into business. There's so many different things you can do. If you're a student, culinary school, you can practice. Um yeah, getting ready to open a restaurant, or if you just don't even want to deal with the restaurant because of like the rent you'll have to pay and your employees and everything, it's just a great way to share your love of food. Um, yeah, have a little mini restaurant in your house without all of the crazy overhead. And one thing we, we really haven't touched on yet, but I think is really important, is the social aspect. Because it's it's so easy to get like locked in our own little lives where we, we don't talk to anyone new, we don't reach out to anyone new. So I can see how this app would be a really good way for even an empty nesters who their, their kids have moved away, but she still loves to cook, but now they're lonely at home. 
they can invite people over, they can yeah. build their network. Yes, I actually have one woman in Waikiki that is so stoked about this app. She has an awesome Instagram account. She posts pictures of these beautiful dishes that she makes. It looks like art, her food, it's incredible. And I reached out to her and she was exactly that. Empty nester, she was like, I am eating this food by myself. It's such a shame, no one even gets to eat it. So. She's alone and really excited to invite people into her house to feed them. Yeah. So tell me about the the journey this app has taken. You said it started out as an idea, two years passed, no one else had created it, so you then started to take action. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, wasn't gonna let this other, this, this idea of many just kinda like fall into someone else's hands, especially when I just wanted it to be done so that I could use it, because I love, you know, I would love to go to a stranger's house and have a meal with them. So I posted on Facebook, does anyone know how you like get a web, you know, get a business going like this? And several people tagged this one woman who used to live here. And so I reached out to her and she works for a company in New York for this guy. And it turns out this developer had actually used an app like mine in France. It's called Feastly. Mm. And so just the fact that he was the type of person that would be in France and want to use that type of concept, I was sold. Um, so yeah, I've been working with him uh, since August mm. and getting it going and getting a logo and getting a video and a website and everything. And it's taking a lot longer than I would like, but we're making sure that we're doing it right and launching at the right time so the app is like no bugs and ready to go. Mm. And that is a challenge. It seems like everything in business takes longer yeah. and costs more yeah. than you think it yeah. will. Yeah. So do you do at this point have an estimate of when it will be out or is it still still in testing? So right now we're sending people to our website to register. Uh, you input your email and we'll send you the app when it's ready. Mm -hmm. It's like almost ready. There's just a few bugs. Um, but yeah, I would say June would be a good estimate, which is next month. That is next month. And it's also my birthday. So Yay, like, mine yeah. too. Woo. June babies. June 24th. June 10th. Oh, that so, would have been yeah, cool. That would have been say. really cool. All right, so can you tell me, it, you said before that this is an idea, you'd had several ideas before, but you'd never acted on them. So what made it really different this time, that this is the one you, you wanted to create? Um, I'm just tired of working a nine to five, and I feel like this will be really successful, to be honest. Um, I think, you know, this could be as big as Airbnb and Lyft, and I would uh, love to travel the world and promote dinner, because we're launching in Hawaii. I know a lot of people in Hawaii. I know I can have a successful launch here. But if it goes crazy in Hawaii, I would love to travel the world and promote it in other areas and make this my uh, life, life's mission. I've practiced this concept a couple times in my home, um, just promoting on Facebook. And I actually had strangers come to my house, like people in my neighborhood um, that were like, I would love to have you know dinner with my neighbor and pay $20, sign me up. Um, so the idea that several people across the world will be having that same experience in their home because of me has just gotten me more excited than anything else that I could think of so even as you talk about it going across the world I, I even had the thought of I have a friend who travels a lot and has business events wherever she goes and they're always looking for restaurants and cool places to eat and I just had the thought well if you're someone with a beautiful home or you're a you've got a really cool neighbor in your house sitting like hopefully it's all legal there but there are so many different opportunities for you to just connect with people and when you when you look at the the, the pol political divisions in our world the religious divisions in our world there are so many so many ways that we divide ourselves from each other it sounds like your app is one of the things that's that's trying to help bring people back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Studies show over and over again that safer neighborhoods are ones where the neighbors know each other and they look out for each other. And so getting people, you know, growing up, we had dinner at our neighbors all the time. We were friends with them, but, you know, just like, this day and age, we just don't do that. And I think Hawaii is a very tight-knit kind of community, but it's also very transient. So like, I've moved a lot. It doesn't give me an opportunity to really meet my neighbors, but you know, if they were on this app, I would probably be friends with all of them and they'd mm. be friends with me. So, yeah. yeah. I'm curious about some of the other ideas you've had before you acted on this one. What oh, other gosh. ideas did you kind of have? I don't know. 
I can't think of one off the top of my head. No, but it's all good. <laughs> but I know I remember my dad, and uh, he was talking with my brothers. We lived in like a really small town, St. George, Utah. And he was like, oh my gosh, it would be such a smart idea if we were to create a rival ambulance company. Because there was only one ambulance company, and apparently at the time they kind of sucked at their job. And he just had the brilliant idea to start an ambulance company. But we just talked about it and thought about it and talked yeah. about it, but we never actually took action. So yeah. for you, what was, what was the thing that turned this from an idea to I'm actually going to make this happen? Well, to be honest, I sold a house in Colorado. I didn't make very much money. I made just enough money that I could probably blow it in one year in Hawaii, <laughs> going on a couple trips, maybe not working as much. And uh, I've actually done that before. And um, I just felt like I want to invest this into my future and something that's going to make myself and a lot of people really happy. And I just told myself, you know, I could lose it all, um, but it's just money. And I'm really trying to make decisions based on love and not fear. Um, yeah, even if this thing only like works a little bit, you know, like only a few people use it, it'll still be fun for me. And yeah, it's just money. I love that. It's just money. It's so it, it's not like you're you're thinking I need this to work or you, you've put all your eggs in this basket. For you, this is this is an idea, something you think would help the world, something you're trying to put out there into the world, but you have other options. and. And if this doesn't work out, you're going to try something else. Yeah, and if I was to not do this and wake up one day and someone else did it, I would be so mad, you know? And I'd have to die knowing that I didn't do that thing because I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some fears, not just about the money, but that, you know, there'll be some backlash because, oh, now we're selling food in our homes like don't you need to have a commercial kitchen for that or like what if someone gets you know uh, hurt or whatever but I think that these are all things that are already being um, worked through with Airbnb I think when Airbnb first came out people were probably like no that's crazy you can't have a stranger sleep in your house it's not safe. that's so dangerous yeah they could rob you but no that's not happening people are learning that your neighbors are safer than you thought and like it's okay to invite someone into your house a stranger into your house they're probably really nice you know just like you so um, yeah there's certainly plenty of things that could go wrong with this and several other any kind of idea you have when you're taking a risk as an entrepreneur but it's super cool to be the first one to do it because you were the one that took the risk and um, if you succeed it's just that much more sweet that really is so inspiring well, you're like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> but I, I am wondering what advice you would give to our viewers, because I know our viewers, I'm sure you've had ideas about something you want to build or something you want to offer the world, but you haven't acted on it. So, so Leland, what advice would you give them to just start moving in the right direction? Um, you just got to start taking steps. So I was really surprised when I posted on Facebook, you know, like who, who can help me with this? So many people were excited to help me. So many people knew the right person, knew the direction to go. And then I took the next step by just calling the guy, you know? And actually his first step for me was to listen to a bunch of podcasts about about startups. So I did that, you know, there were several steps I needed to do before I actually spent the money. And I think we get stuck on like, oh, it's gonna cost a lot or it's gonna be dangerous or risky. You can still take steps. And if those steps start to build momentum and start making you feel good and excited, then you know you're going in the right direction. Um, also, like, you just have to trust, like, things kind of always work out. Like, if you lose all your money, you'll be fine. It's not, I think that um, our brains are trained to uh, help us avoid pain, and so we get these really good ideas, and it feels really good, and then the second thought is, oh, but you could get hurt, because we really, our bodies are intended to help us uh, avoid pain and suffering. Um, so you kind of got to go with the first thought, which was the one that made you feel really good. And uh, if you're not happy with your current job or your current situation, and you're thinking about that every day and it's making you sad, you need to go in the direction of the thing that makes you feel good and try to ignore that little fear response that's trying to protect you from hurt. because. The hurt usually isn't even that bad. Like if I, this money that I made off of selling my house in Colorado, I've never actually even seen it. Like I made the money and then I just, I paid it for the app, right? So it doesn't affect my life in any kind of negative way if I lose the money. 
Mm. That is interesting. And I know so many of so many times we see this big goal we really want to build and we see like all the way in the distance, it's so far, it's going to take so much sweat and blood and effort to get there that we just think, you know what, I'm just going to save the trip instead of focusing on, you know, the million of tiny steps that it will take to get there when the only step you need to worry about is the very next one yeah. and then the next one. All right, viewers, we are going to be right back after a short break, and when we come back, you will be surprised at what we're talking about. See you in a minute. I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to Out of the Comfort Zone on ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, Arby Kelly, and I'm here with Leland Papaya, the creator of an app that is coming soon to you. Now, now, Leland, over the break, I was thinking that it's it's so interesting how we've been conditioned to be afraid of strangers. Like like you said, when Airbnb first came out, it was it was a big scary idea that you'd let strangers stay in your home, and that was one of the things you mentioned being a that people would have to get over when they tried to use your app. Yeah. So why do you think that is? Um, I don't think we're actually as scared of our neighbor as we think everybody is. I think we live in a day and age where we're more disconnected than ever, and people are really craving connections. Um, it's very rare that I tell anyone about this idea where they say, oh my god, I could never do that. Um, it happens every once in a while, but mostly people are like, how do I sign up? I can't wait to do it, you know? Most of us live on streets where we're passing by our neighbor and just like waving hello, and we're like, this is so awkward we live right next to each other and all we do is wave um, especially in Hawaii um, I know that we're not immune to crime but it's a really safe place to live and so I don't think we're I don't think there's not very many people that would be too scared to use this app um, and it's not like staying the night. I mean, if you show up for someone's dinner party and they're a little weird, you're there for an hour and then you have a story to tell. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that danger is the first thing that comes to mind with this one. I feel like it's more just awkwardness. Maybe we don't have the same political views or maybe, um, yeah, we don't have anything to talk about. But I, I really feel like with this one, that's the worst case scenario that's going to happen. Hmm. Is there going to be a way for people to, to kind of rate the interaction? Like, oh, is a horrible cook, or oh, it sends like super serial killer vibes. Is there a way for people to kind of like rate other users? I'm really glad you asked me that because I put a lot of thought into that, and the answer is no. Mm. I don't want people to go to a dinner party and feel like they're being rated Judged. and reviewed because cultures are different, especially in Hawaii. And maybe you think I'm rude because I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of dinner or I was talking with my food in my mouth or whatever like that, or I put my elbows on the table. Um, certainly people can make a lot of mistakes during dinner and I just don't think it's fair to feel like you're being reviewed. I can um, see that. Same with the host. If, you know, a little lady down the street is trying to cook you her her famous chicken, lemon chicken and rice, and she like 
overcooked the chicken, you know, and like didn't really do that good of a job. I feel like her heart is in the good, in, in the right place. And I just think it would be crushing for her to get a one star because of that. Now, certainly if someone is consistently providing a bad experience, um, our email is available and I definitely want to hear about those. And I will personally call them, go to their house and coach them on what is going wrong. And if someone needs to be taken off the app, I will for sure. But I just don't think in this type of community building, relationship building app, that I really want human beings to be reviewed when they're just trying to share a meal with someone. I think I can see where you're coming from, but they're also charging people for that meal, which means if someone advertises that they've got like a super, super fancy meal and you show up and it's not what was advertised, then, then what is the situation there? Yeah, that's a good question. I still want to stick to, I want to hear from people and, and especially in the initial stages, I'm going to be reaching out to guests afterwards and asking them how things are going. Uh, or how things went, um, and I want to have a personal relationship with hosts, mm -hmm. and you know, contact them about this complaint, and it better not happen again. And mm -hmm. if it does, then you're going to be taken off the app. I don't think anyone is going to use this to take advantage of people. I think there's going to be some hiccups and mistakes made mm -hmm. as they're figuring things out. Um, but you know, I'm open to for s suggestions. If that's not working, we can add the reviews later on. But for right now, I feel like, for example, with Airbnb, you're rating the house in the room more than um, the love and energy that someone puts into a meal and like their, you know rating them on their personality or their their culture um, that can get a little sticky I think mm, I can see that I can see that something you'll have to you'll have to test and, and tweak yes. as it because I can see how the the personal level of feedback is going to be working when it's here in Hawaii but if it if it blows up is incredibly successful you're gonna you're gonna have to either bring on a team to do that yeah. review or you're gonna have that's something that's a bridge you'll cross when yeah it yeah it. yeah my developer keeps telling me like whenever I anticipate problems he was like by that time you'll be making so much money you'll be able to afford you know lawyers and a team and you know all of that stuff so that's a good perspective <laughs> I like that yeah well, I did. I did get a question in my ear from from the team back there, wondering if you'll be able to like verify users like Lyft or Uber do. Um, again, when we're when we're really popular and we're making a lot of money, then yes, we'll be able to do that. Do that. But for right now, uh, it's just going to be a small community of hosts and guests where we're just going to have to trust each other. Um, and yeah, I would love to add that later on for sure. All right, so it sounds like if, if anyone, you're not anticipating problems with the app, you're not anticipating problems in the community, but if there are, you are gonna make the decision at that time as to how, how to deal with it then. Yeah, I wanna have a real close, like I said, a real close relationship with the hosts and the guests, reach out to them after parties, ask them how it went, and uh, call them on the phone if I need to, show up if I need to, go to their dinner parties. I am so excited about that. I mean, once we launch, I'm gonna go to a dinner party every single night, I can't wait. Um, um, I want them to know that I'm a person, I'm here, this is my little app, you know, we're not a huge company, and let's all guard it and keep it safe and secure as a community, um, rather than feeling like it's this big company that will just turn you off if you make a mistake. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So you want that very personal feel. Yeah. So if there are if there are viewers who are interested in investing or maybe beta testing or anything else, how should they get in contact with you? Is that something you're even looking for? Well, we've been doing, um, yeah, beta testing, yes. Yeah. So we're doing alpha testing right now, and we're almost done with that. Beta testing will be in June. Um, I've got about 70 emails of people that are ready to go, whether uh, as a host or a guest. Um, but we're, we would still love to have more people that can be patient and understanding and help us figure this out as a community, for sure. And you would do that by going to our website and uh, registering. All right. All right. Let's see, what about what about food preferences? Like someone being vegan or vegetarian or like purely carnivore, how do how do people navigate that? Yeah, so I encourage people when they name their meal to, you know, if it's vegan, call it vegan pizza party or uh, whatnot. You know, if you have a really sensitive uh, food allergy, maybe this app isn't for you, you know, because I know that uh, I had a vegan dinner party once where I accidentally put a salad dressing on the table that had a little bit of dairy in it. 
and um, you know, I'm a human, we make mistakes, um, we're not restaurants, we're just people kind of throwing parties, so you got to go into those with caution, um, but yeah, I would love to later on have search functions on the app where you can search for a vegan party or a gluten-free party and I think people that are really into cooking those specialty foods are really going to get a kick out of using the app to spread their love of gluten-free cooking or vegan cooking. Awesome. Yeah. So where can people go to, to get on your waiting list? Yeah, so on our website, www.dinnerparty.io. Dinnerparty.io. Dinnerparty .io. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty much the only thing that's there right now is a short explainer video and a place to put your email. And as soon as the app is ready, um, and it's free by the way, of course, oh, good to know. of course, um, we'll email it to everyone that way. Wait, I just had a question. You said the app is free, but you also said it can make you lots of money. How does that work? Oh, yeah. So just like Airbnb, um, Dinner Party will collect a small 10% oh, commission gotcha. off of every seat sold. So you don't have to charge users, but you just you just get a tiny fraction of, of the seat sold. Yes. And I'm sorry, uh, correction, we charge 13% because our the payment processing company takes 3%. So, gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. So 10% just to keep it go rolling, keep it going, um, website advertising, the app, which is way more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, marketing is not fun. <laughs> yeah. But where do, you, where do you see this app going in the, in the next five years? Where do you want it to be? Well, I just would love for it to be a household name like Airbnb. Um, I'm really excited about the people. I think there's a lot of people that need this app. Um, one would be people who are alone and are eating alone. And um, actually, I was living in Kailua for a while, and I always saw this one woman out to eat at restaurants with her dog. And uh, I just couldn't wait for the app to be ready so that I could give her a card. Because, um, you know, you go out to eat at a restaurant to be around people, but do you really connect? No, you're oh. surrounded by a sea of people, but you're there by yourself. And the waitress will come up and ask you what you'd like to order, but there's no connection whatsoever. You're still alone. Yeah, so people that are alone, I want them to. I want this to be popular enough that they're hearing about it and they're hearing that it's going well and that it's safe, you know, so they feel like they can use it. And then I also want it to be popular enough that tourists hear about it mm. because, you know, when people come to visit Hawaii, they're eating all of their meals um, mostly at restaurants, yeah. which is great. We have a lot of great restaurants. We do. Yeah. But who are they hearing about all the cool things that we have here? They're hearing about it from the hotel. They're hearing about for the restaurant, and they're just hearing about all the tourist traps. Basically, are they really hearing about Hawaii. the cool, like the beach cleanups that are going on, or the fundraisers, or the just the events that you only know about if you live here? So um, yeah, and then the other thing is like experiencing Hawaiian culture. I would love for a few Hawaiian families to use this app, say in Waimanalo or Waianae, to where a tourist can actually see. Like how Hawaiians do it, you know, like a backyard barbecue, um, eat Hawaiian food. I mean, that is really hard to come by. I mean, the, Pol the Polynesian Cultural Center, I feel like, is the go to for the tourists to like learn about Hawaii, but how about like with a real family? So it sounds like this is not only something that's going to bring neighbors together, but something that could also give, give tourists a glimpse of real Hawaii and something that could give locals tourist money in their pocket. Yes, because right now tourist money is only going to the big dogs. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, similar to Airbnb, I know that Airbnb has a little bit of a like negative thing going on right now. I'm not sure. I really try to stay out of that. But um, Airbnb gives people an opportunity to make a little money on tourism, you know, for the extra bedroom that they have, and same, same. So, yeah, you can make a little side hustle um, having tourists over for your Auntie's lasagna. All right, that is so powerful, and I am so excited for when you finally bring the app out to to us, so we can yeah. practice it and use it and get to know our neighbors. Yeah, so are you going to host, or are I you going to be a guest? I will. Yeah? I will host, yeah, okay, I will. Good. I'll do Thank both. You. It'll be fun. Yeah, I Thank promise. Thank you, Lily, for coming. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks and for having viewers, me. Yeah, our pleasure. And viewers, this is something that is going to make a difference in Hawaii. And it was done by someone here who just wanted to make a difference, had dozens of ideas, but finally took action. So you can make a difference, but you can only make a difference if you start 
taking action. So take action and change the world. I'll see you next week. Bye.